Good morning. Yeah, um, Noel kind of took away my entire intro. Um, so that's two minutes out the window for me. Uh, yeah, I'm from Constance. Um, so, um, you know, working in Switzerland kind of has a special place in my heart. This is the second time that, that it was organized, right? It's my second time that I was um, invited or allowed to speak here. Um, and I'm very excited to be here, and I hope you guys are too. I am from um, a city called Constance. Um, the Lake of Constance is beautiful. That's how I describe it to all my friends, you know, when they ask where I'm from. Um, if that doesn't look familiar to you, maybe that does. You know, yeah. <laughs> It was it's Saturday today, so I'm glad you're here and not a Constance. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. But let's talk about WordPress 4.3, uh, the most recent release of WordPress, which I had the honor of leading. It was the first time, actually, that I led anything in WordPress. I've been contributing to WordPress for about five years now, um, and really starting out um, getting more involved with um, the WordPress project in 2011 when I started reviewing themes. Um, before WordPress 4.3, I worked on most of the default themes. Um, so 2013, I think, had the most impact on. But I also helped out with uh, 2012 and 2014, and a little bit with 2015, not too much. But uh, WordPress 4.3 was the first time that I really um, led um, an effort within WordPress. Um, the main reason why I was chosen to be leading WordPress 4.3 was because I had time. <laughs> but, which I had. Um, but it was great, and um, and so to start out, I'd like to give you um, a quick overview over uh, the timeline of WordPress 4.3. Um, it started out at the end of April um, with the initial 4.3 meeting. That was just a week after we had um, shipped WordPress 4.2 at that point in time. Together with, I don't know if you remember that, um, around three security updates within like a week. Um, so people were super burned out. Um, and uh, so for the first month of WordPress 4.3, which was um, May, there wasn't really a whole lot of um, momentum going um, up until that point. It's, it, you know, it took um, almost until June until we really had you know, some momentum there and people got excited and started contributing a whole lot more than, than they used to. Um, we had a two month period of alpha, which is the, the period within the release where um, we work on features and we fix bugs and are pretty free in, you know, in what we do. Um, then we had a beta phase which lasted for a month in July. Uh, and in beta, we, we just work on bugs and regressions that were introduced by working on features. We don't introduce more features to that. And it's kind of, you know, um, to make sure that we um, get ready in time uh, for uh, the release candidate phase, which started July 29th with the release candidate being uh, the software in a state where we think it is um, releasable, right? Where we think um, it's in a state where we could ship it today. Um, so the way we determine that is basically um, by having a zero count of tickets, right? There's no known bugs, there's no, um, I don't know, glitches reported. And if we fix everything by that point in time, we're ready for release candidate, which we were uh, initially. Um, WordPress operates on a, on a way of creating features or building features for its software um, that we adopted about a year ago called um, Feature Plugins, right? Where we um, create features plugins in, in a plugin first uh, in order to be able to um, not be tied to a single release with a specific feature, right? Before that, um, we were um, developing features within a release, and if that feature wasn't ready, um, a lot of the times we had to push back the release date in order to be able to fit that feature into the release. Uh, and now with, you know, having as plugins, you can just continue working on them, as, you know, um, for as long as needed until they're ready to be merged into core. And um, for that to be determined, we had a merge window, which happened between June 3rd and June 17th. Um, so it's like a two-week window um, where we decide, you know, which plugins are uh, ready for core, which can be, you know, merge into core, and then we have a two-week window where we can actually do the, the merging. Um, so that was in June, I skipped that before. Um, pretty much all the deadlines you see here on beta 1 through release candidate, <coughs> including the target date for the release of the WordPress 4.3, um, we hit. Um, we, I think there was one where we were like two hours late, and it was beta 2, which bugged the hell out of me. Two hours. But, and, and anyway, um, 
so other than that, we were on time, which um, I was very, very proud of, and released um, Work of Folklore 3 August 18th, pretty much a month ago, pretty exactly a month ago. Um, and we didn't release a, a minor update um, to fix bugs that, you know, um, were reported to us after release uh, until this last week, which is actually a pretty long time. We usually um, shoot for like two weeks after a, ma a major release to, you know, release a, a maintenance update. Um, but for, for that, for, for, uh, for 4.3, it actually took us, um, or we were able to, to push it back um, a month, which is pretty remarkable. So who here has not updated to 4.3 yet? Who of you is on an old WordPress uh, version? One, two, perfect. Awesome. Wow, I'm proud of you guys. That's great. Um, for the two people who have not updated yet, I um, brought you the release video that we created for WordPress 4.3. And um, if you have no other reason to upgrade than these features, maybe they will convince you to do that. So. Give you the release video. WordPress 4.3, Billy, named for jazz legend Billy Holiday, makes your writing workflow faster, your site easier to customize, and your passwords stronger. Let's take a look at how WordPress 4.3 is helping one small business owner. This is Kate, and this is the website for Kate's Cafe, Schrodinger's Cup. Kate wants to provide a daily menu for her customers to keep them updated on what she's serving each day. This morning, she's going to make that happen right in WordPress. Kate's new daily menu page will tell her customers what she's brewing and what's for lunch that day. She wants to make her formatting nice and clear for her customers so they can quickly see what's on offer. In WordPress 4.3, she can change how her text looks without any clicks. Formatting shortcuts allow her to create lists, headings and quotes without breaking her flow. That keeps the task of publishing her daily menu straightforward and fast, leaving her free for the serious business of making coffee. Time for Kate to add the new page to the navigation menu on her sidebar. There's no need to go to the admin to do this. In WordPress 4.3, Kate can add her new menu item from the customizer, where she can live preview changes to her website before she publishes them. When viewing her new page, all she has to do is click Customize, select Menus, and add the new page to her sidebar menu. That wasn't hard. Now Kate's customers can check her website every day to see what she's serving. There's another new tool in the customizer. Kate can now upload a site icon so that her logo appears in browser tabs and bookmark menus. Her customers can even create a shortcut on the home screen of their mobile device. Now they always have Kate's daily menu whenever they need it. And those aren't the only changes to WordPress 4.3. When Kate adds a new staff member to her website, WordPress will generate a strong password for them. If the staff member changes that password, WordPress tells them if their password is strong. That's enough WordPress for today, Kate's got a business to run. But she's happy that with every update, WordPress keeps improving. And she in turn can keep her customers happy, giving them the information they need right at their fingertips. WordPress 4.3, Billy, a more refined blend. Which was not 
ideal, of course. Um, one of the reasons for that was because we didn't really have a way to, to do specialized testing for it, right? It was the second bullet point. Um, and that is something that we should um, figure out for next time when we have a feature like shared uh, or term splitting um, to, to improve that. Box scrubs was something that um, was usually only um, done by two or three people, right? There was hardly a time where there was more than three people who, um, who showed up to do um, some scrubbing of tickets and, and push tickets for. Um, and also we had a problem of, of a lack of movement towards the end of the cycle where um, a lot of the lead developers had other um, other engagements um, outside of core. Um, and so it was kind of slowed us, it slowed us down. It wasn't, it wasn't um, something that really helped us move forward. Feature plugins, um, I mentioned those earlier. There was really not a, a, an obvious choice that was ready for 4.3, which is something that has been a problem for a couple of releases now, where uh, feature plugins are not in a state where um, they're obviously ready for WordPress core. Um, and that was also the case in 4.3. Uh, I hope that would be better in the current release, 4.4, where there's um, a, a few plugins, and I think uh, you'll hear um, about some of them throughout the day. Um, that might be ready for side icon, which um, was also introduced in the video before, um, should have been done as a feature plugin. Um, we, we pulled that feature out of Jetpack, really, and completely rewrote it, right? Um, and so it was really hard to do it as a feature plugin. It was more, more um, a, a feature that was a, um, a, a feature filler, if you want, for WordPress 4.3. Uh, and also have core mentors involved much earlier which they have been better um, about doing in WordPress 4.4, where um, we have uh, core mentors for uh, the WordPress uh, REST API plugin and also for ImageFlow, which is another uh, feature plugin. Um, and uh, OEMBIT, I think, is also one where we have a strong core mentor for um, the feature. I don't know how involved you are in uh, you know, the WordPress community and uh, the WordPress um, coverage and, and blogs and everything, but menu customize was certainly something that was, you know, one of the main features in 4.3. It was certainly something that caused some controversy. And um, first of all, um, it wasn't really controversy within the, the core team or people who contributed to core, but rather people who work with WordPress um, who don't directly contribute to core, but, um, but use the customizer and WordPress a whole lot for their daily work, you know, creating websites for other people. Um, maintaining their plugins, etc. Um, so, from a core point of view, um, a lot of people felt that the menu customizer wasn't uh, complete before the merge window, which is um, a goal that is um, defined pretty fuzzily. Um, all it says usually is that the feature plugin has to be ready, and no one really knows what ready is. Um, so, it's it's you know it has some leeway in both directions. Um, and some people felt also that um, we relax standards to make the deadline with the menu customizer. Um, so going forward, I mean, this, is, this has been something um, that has been an issue for you know a few releases where um, we kind of had to rush features in um, to, to make that merge deadline. Uh, and I think for a little bit at least, um, that was also true for the menu customizer. Although in my opinion, um, it was pretty much right. It was, it was, it was pretty far from. Um, the merge proposal was was the thing that kind of ca caused the controversy because in the merge proposal it said that um, it was a proposal after it was, it was just a suggestion but people took it for um, for you know this is how it's going to be uh, and the merge proposal said that um, we should remove menus from the admin entirely and only have them in the customizer and that's what a lot of people um, felt very strongly about and I'm going to share with you um, some of the things that said uh, it's pretty remarkable. Anyway, uh, so we could have proofread that article, right? And something I probably should have done. Um, and it also could have been written in a different way where it would be more obvious that it's um, a proposal and not really set in stone. So some of the things that were said was merch seems more like a coup de UI. Yes. Could we put the novel technique Yes. Oh, I thought I did. Uh, so feature plugins are um, features that are developed as plugins. Um, and just like any other plugin, you can activate it on your site and you can test it. 
and we develop on that plugin instead of um, working on it in, in core through patches, uh, which also has the, uh, the benefit that it doesn't have the bottleneck of uh, committers having to commit code, but pretty much anyone can, can help contribute and commit code to that plugin, right? Um, and then merging is when we bring code, in that case, the plugin, into core, right? So where we write, um, yeah, we split up the plugin in a way that it fits into the core architecture of code. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question. That's awesome. Um, yeah, some of the things that were said about the menu customizer. I believe the complete customizer should be flushed down the drain. It is very slow and very unpleasant to work with. That's kind of crazy pants. Worst idea <coughs> Gets better. I'm embarrassed on behalf of these two developers. It's an absurd and idiot idea that should have never gotten into the customizer. Another wonderful decision by the team. It's nice to be dictated to by people who don't care at all about the actual users. I'm starting to see how at least some core developers are becoming so arrogant and refusing to really listen to users. That's some. So this is, this is kind of what we had to deal with, and what we had to clean up. So we could have probably done that a little better. Um, other things that didn't go as well, we completely changed features after beta 1. That was um, something that happened with uh, site icon, um, which I worked on, and that is true. And uh, I wish it would be would have been possible to do that differently, but it wasn't. Um, we had a big commit about 24 hours before the release, which didn't really feel good. Um, that is true. Um, I wish we uh, could have had like a, a six day or a week freeze to you know feel really comfortable about the release. And um, notes about the new features could have been written up earlier, which is more of my fault. But what went really well? What went great with 4.3? Um, better passwords, which was also mentioned in the video, right? Went really well. We had a, a great um, a great place at the beginning of the release line, uh, outlining. Um, you know, the way to better passwords. Uh, people reactions to keyboard shortcuts. I don't know if you've experienced them. You should definitely try them out. Um, they saved me a ton of time already. Um, and people love them. Um, anywhere we show them at our work camps, um, people are super excited about them and we only got started with them. Like, there will be more that will be added to, to WordPress. Uh, and also, um, a lot of people were happy with the list table changes. So we changed list tables in the admin to work on mobile and had all the information on mobile um, readily available, just as it does on desktop. Um, you should definitely check it out. Um, see if you know your mobile experience um, is better with WordPress 4.3. We had a pretty solid crop of guest committers, um, which was um, Ella Isolde, Wes Miller, and me. Um, all three of us we worked on features that were, um, yeah, that you know were, were part of the, the about page. So things that users actually saw um, between site icon. Um, menu customizer and uh, and uh, the oh, I lost it um, and the um, uh, formatting shortcuts. I'm sorry. We had app attraction on formatting on the formatting component, which is traditionally something that is really hard to grok because formatting has to come for a lot of edge cases. Um, so formatting is everything that is um, taking con uh, taking a block of text and you know making quotes curly quotes, for example. Like that is part of formatting. Um, and with you know a bazillion languages that it has to account for, uh, that is pretty um, complicated. Touch and small screen usability has improved significantly, which was one of the, the major um, goals of 4.3 um, in my book. I'm really glad with, that we accomplished that. And also shared share taxonomy terms I did. Um, this is an effort that has started in 4.2 where um, whenever there was um, two terms that had the same ID, right? So if you have like a category that is called Zurich, and you have a tag that is called Zurich, um, those would be like the same piece of data in the database. Uh, and we split those for, to, to, be, to be two different items, which they really are. Um, and in 4.3, we kind of forced that split, um, which is really something that is not trivial and had the potential to um, break a lot of sites, but we were able to do it in a way that it didn't. And so, yeah, a lot of people are super happy about that. And it opens up the possibility for you know future improvements to taxonomies um, that people are very excited about. If you follow me on Twitter, I, I tweeted about this slide that probably mentioned triangle. I'll hide. I had it uh, in college.
polish, now he did it, and now it's more slides. I can't believe it. <laughs> but 4.3 was, was a software project, right? And like any other project, it had a defined budget and a defined scope and a defined time. And usually what happens in projects is uh, one of those three things will not um, end up being in the place where, you know, where it was supposed to be in the beginning. So either, you know, you have to increase budget or you have to, uh, I don't know, add more time to your project in order to realize uh, the scope and quality that you're looking for. Uh, with 4.3, we were actually able um, to, to not do that a whole lot, right? Um, I mean, budget or resources in that case is something that, um, in an open source project, is something that you really can't plan with and all, right? Because everyone is a volunteer, or most, most people are volunteers. Um, so it was kind of an unknown, and we had to work with what we had. We couldn't just increase resources, we couldn't just, you know, hire new people, that was just not possible. Um, we had a set, defined of scope, right? We had uh, features that we wanted to include, and we certainly had a set time. We had, you know, the roadmap that I showed you earlier, um, with the release date of, of August 18. So, yeah, it was pretty much um, set, and we were able to, to achieve all that without um, without having to change a whole lot, which I'm super, super proud of. So the two things that I'm most proud of about 4.3 is that we shipped a stable version, um, a stable major release. Um, I mentioned earlier that um, it took, we, we had the, the luxury of waiting a month uh, to release a minor update, uh, which is not something that happens a whole lot. And I hope that you know this experience will increase the confidence in in end users in our releases. Um, something that I tried to do with 4.3. Um, very stable. I talked to some um, support forum uh, volunteers who said that um, yeah, the effort in, in terms of support has been more um, around a minor version update than a major version update. There was really not a whole lot of things that people complained about or had questions about, um, and I'm super proud of that. But most importantly, we shipped on time, and, um, and I can't believe that we actually pulled it off. I, um, I tweeted about it. I, in, in April, I set the, the schedule and I said, you know, um, August 18th is going to be the day we release WordPress. And we did release on, WordPress, uh, on, on, on August 18th, and I also hope that this is yet another thing that people will take um, and, you know, build more confidence in WordPress releases. Um, I read some, some emails and some posts where it said, um, well, you know, WordPress is supposed to be released next week, but I guess we'll see if it really happens. And that kind of sucks, you know, I don't want to read that, that really sucks. If people have that expectation already, why do we, you know, do, do uh, deadlines in the first place? So, one of the um, philosophies of WordPress is deadlines are not arbitrary. And it was, this was also one of my, my major goals for 4.3, um, to be able to say, we release on time, and I am able to say that, and I'm super proud of that. The next thing is, was that a clap? The one person clapped, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Uh, um, the next thing was uh, 4.3 for the first time um, had almost a million automatic updates. So most of you probably know we have automatic updates for, for minor versions and you can manually set through a plugin or like, you know, constant code, um, you can set it up so that every version upgrade um, will be applied automatically. And so 4.3 for the first time had almost a million automatic updates, which was amazing and led to a new record where we hit um, 1 million downloads of the software in less than 9 hours. Um, 4.2, this is me by the way, it's uh, 4.2, um, it took um, just over 24 hours to hit 1 million downloads. Um, and 4.3 it was less than 9 hours. I'm pretty sure that we will easily top that um, with the next update in 4.4. <laughs> My name is Constantine Obenland. Um, you possibly saw my, my Twitter handle on the slides at Obenland. I'm going to define my self worth over my Twitter followers, so feel free to follow me. Um, I tweet that I, I, uh, I blog also at constantine.obenland.it, mostly pictures because I'm not good at writing, but they are interesting. Um, I work at Automatic. Um, my title there is Release Lead Retired. I, <laughs> I've been there for three years. Um, I work on a team that is dedicated full-time to contributing to WordPress core and the WordPress.org infrastructure. And, um, yeah, this is it for me. If you have questions, I think we have a couple minutes for questions. And now we're going to So 
I have a first question for you. Um, how does someone in this room, which has just limited sort of development experience, they've worked with small websites, medium-sized websites, things like that, how do they, you know, how do they come tomorrow and start contributing to the core or to, to theme reviews or whatever? How do they feel comfortable about it? Um, we still have a few sp uh, spots, um, so you're more than welcome to come. And, yeah. Great plug. Uh, yes, so if you can read or write, uh, you can contribute to WordPress. <laughs> I assume most of, most, most, most of you guys uh, here, here are able to do that. Um, there is a vast difference in skill sets of people who contribute to WordPress. You, don't, you cannot only contribute you know, through code, uh, contribute to WordPress core, like some people do. You can also, as, as Noah mentioned, you can um, uh, review themes. You can write plugins and put them in the, in the repository. That is something that you can do, contribute to WordPress without really contributing to, to the project, right? Um, documentation is something that needs a lot more volunteers than we currently have to document the code that we have, to document processes. Um, that's why I said, like, if you can read and write, you can help us out. There will be a lot of volunteers um, tomorrow who can help you um, get involved. Um, and all you need to do is really just show up. Um, Another thing I can do is, is translate. Uh, I mean, most people here speak more than one language, I assume. So this is definitely something that um, most people here, you know, could pr probably do help translate um, WordPress plugins, themes for other users. Uh, we've just recently launched um, localized plugin and theme repositories. So there is a huge demand of translation work right now, um, so that you know those repositories are. Can be can be offered in in local languages. Um, yeah, tons of other opportunities. Just show up, please do. Um, Noel just said there's more room, um, and I think there's pizza. Is that correct? Free pizza. Come on, guys. <laughs> Sign up, no? Uh, yeah, it's on the yes. schedule or the bottom of the schedule? It's at the bottom of the schedule. You can sign up for contributor day tomorrow. Please do. Yes, please. I typically install the new major WordPress already in the only house for one month. So then I'll have lots of bugs and I wait for some revisions. How do you ensure quality? So the question was. Um, he said that he usually waits a month for uh, the minor update to upgrade to a new version. How do we um, ensure quality? Um, is that correct? Yeah. Um, so, uh, WordPress 4.3 was an exception, of course. It was very stable. Um, how do we ensure quality? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, we have, um, uh, well, in, in 4.3, in that case, we had uh, four weeks of, of a beta fix and then an additional three weeks of RC. So we had seven, seven weeks, um, almost half the release that we um, only spend on fixing bugs, testing the hell out of the new features that we have, um, and making sure that uh, they're as stable as, as possible. Of course, we are dependent on um, outside testers, of people, on people who, um, who also test in their environments. Um, without that, we can only, like, we can only do so much, right? Um, one of the things that really held us, or keeps holding us back, is that a lot of people only start testing when we hit the um, release candidate phase, because they don't, you know, deem it necessary or worth their time to, to test it, um, which really, really um, slows us down and, and, and increases our workload towards the end of the release, which is not ideal, right? I, ideally, we would have those reports in the data phase where we can um, address them much quicker than in RC. Um, so we're, we rely on our testing. We have um, a big unit test suite now in WordPress for both PHP and JavaScript, um, which we rely on heavily uh, in the meantime. Um, uh, feature plugins also are not merged without unit tests. They also need um, user testing for um, user experience purposes, um, and they need to be as bug-free as possible. Um, so we have another quality gateway right there when we merge uh, feature plugins in. Ideally, of course, I mean, there's always bugs that, you know, are unforeseen. Um, but these are all measures that we take to to um, make sure that, you know, the, the releases are as stable as possible. And I'm pretty sure that this is also something that we'll continue to, to, to um, get better um, as we move along. Um, I think
think 4.2 and 4.1 were pretty stable releases, 4.3 obviously too. Um, 4.2 had, um, yeah, had, had um, a security update coming out pretty much like a week after it was released, which was unfortunate, um, but in itself it was a very stable release, and I think the first maintenance release wasn't until three or four weeks later as well. Is that a good answer? Perfect. Thanks for your question. One more? Yes. Security. Is it so hard to, to move the core of the WordPress out of the public directory? Is it hard to do the? Is it so hard to move it out of the public directory, directory to, to ensure security? Because really, the, the big, biggest issue of the WordPress is its uh, hold within all the other files inside the site itself. So, like all other frameworks, it would be pulled out out of the root. That is a good question. Um, I, I know that you can pull out the content folder and you can pull out wp-config, first of all. Um, and I'm pretty sure that with the right permissions, um, you're pretty safe when it comes, comes to the files. I'm not a security expert, unfortunately, um, so I'm not sure I can help you a lot with that, but I know who could answer your question, uh, and I'm happy to connect you later on. Is that an acceptable answer? Thank you. All right, thanks so much. All right, guys. Um, I'm done for today. Actually, that's not true. I'm gonna, I have another one coming up, right? Okay. I'm not done for today. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> I'll see you later.